so Floyd was the first person who had heard about what we were doing at DirecTV and all the marketing stuff that reached out. And then once we started working with Floyd, um, we, we launched Floyd's YouTube channel. You could probably look it up, his first video. I think it was like 2010, uh, Floyd Mayweather was creating YouTube videos. Um, and then right around that time, we launched a kind of similar to what Folsom is doing now with Nelk, right? Like one of the reasons why Folsom exists and Happy Dad exists is because brands aren't really keen on working with Nelk. So Kyle said, fuck it, I'll just create my own brands and ended up working to his benefit. And that was the same issue with Floyd back then. Brands didn't really like working with Floyd all too much. So we started the money team with Floyd. So the money team was something that me, my brother and, and Floyd created together, which is his clothing line, now his brand. It's a, it's a brand that we had created together. And it was the same thing that kind of going back to today that you know Kyle and I have discussed is like, you know, are we gonna go chase around and try to sign a deal with Reebok and Nike or Under Armour or whomever, or do we just create our own brand that you actually own outright, which is what we did with Floyd. And a lot of people knew that. A lot of people in the industry said like, who are these two brothers that are doing all this with Floyd on YouTube, on social media, creating the money team brand, you know, and then we would always reach out to people, like give people kind of like we do with Happy Dad or Full Sense sending care packages. We would send everyone these cool care packages with the money team. And kind of we just developed this relate or this reputation of like like these like forward thinkers, um, which in 2010 was like, you know, creating a YouTube channel around someone like Floyd was like very different. Mm. Um, you know, uh, you know uh, back then, I mean, I, like music videos were kind of newer to YouTube, let alone like celebrities creating original content that's not seen anywhere else but YouTube. That was not normal in 2010. And how were you getting paid? Because it wasn't through YouTube at that point. Were you getting money from the clients that you were working with, or were so, you that's a good question. part of the brand? We made a lot. We made we made no money for a very long time because the clients didn't want to pay because they're like, "Dude, where do I make money?" Mm -hmm. Like, and by the way, like, why would I pay you? People pay me, so that was their mentality. Um, yeah, there was no monetization on YouTube. Um, we try to get brands to get on board. Um, and sponsor videos. Um, the problem with that was the brands would say like, let's just say like a company like Reebok said like, hey, sure, we'll, tr we'll, we'll experiment. We'll give you five grand of video, you know, three videos, you know, but how do I go to Floyd Mayweather and say, hey, I just got a $15,000 deal from Reebok when, you know, LeBron James is making $10 million a year from Nike, you know? So like, like I, like I didn't even know how to explain that. He's like, dude, I'm not endorsing Reebok for $15,000. So, so brands, you know, brands were trying to use us as the cheap way to get to the celebrity that celebrity saw through that, didn't want to do it. Brands wouldn't want to spend more than like whatever this little money that they had to experiment. So we were kind of left out. So we were like, all right, like we're just going to not make money for a very long time, but build out this network, build out this reputation. And it was really until uh, the money team launch. When the money team launched, that was our, you know, we created a Shopify site and from day one started making money off off that, which was a, you know, pretty much a joint venture between us and Floyd. So do you have ownership in the money team? Yeah. Still to this yeah. day? Yeah. Wow. I have ownership in it and, um, but also pretty much gave it to Floyd and told Floyd because Floyd knows I'm doing my thing and just told Floyd like, thank you for everything. You got this, like, you know, and he's got a whole new team running it. So I'm not active whatsoever with the money team. Um, but yeah, on paper, I still got ownership. Do you still get royalties from that? Or are you just like, you know, you take it, I'm going to focus on this thing here. Honestly, like yeah. maybe I'm entitled to it, but like, sure. You know, it's not worth the fact that Floyd gave me that chance and like believed in me and my brother. And like, like I always, 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 whether he knows this or not, I always give credit to Floyd being the first person that helped me get into this business. Floyd led me to Mike Tyson. Floyd led me to Justin Bieber. You know, Justin Bieber led me to Nelk. Nelk led me to Fulson and Happy Dad. You know, like, but like I always go back to like, it was Floyd that led me to meeting Bieber and Bieber led me to meeting Kyle, Steve, you know, and now what we have in Fulson and Happy Dad. Yeah. I found it very interesting in a prior podcast, you had mentioned that you never burn bridges and you always keep the relationships open because you never know where that might lead. Never know, never know. Doesn't matter who it is. Um, yeah, you just never know. I'm 43 years old, still people like 10 years ago that 
come across. I mean, there's people who burnt bridges with me and I feel bad for them, but I don't, yeah. I don't burn bridges.